Okay, as long as the babbling Phil stays babbling, <laughs> this is I World. <laughs> oh God, there is no there is no shortage of I Worldiness this week, is there? No shortage at all. That's right. <laughs> God. <laughs> what do we want to start with? <laughs> well, I mean, we got the show notes. Uh, I, do you, I guess uh, WWDC would probably be the best, right? Okay, so we'll go slightly out of order and start with WWDC. Uh, let's see. I, do we want to go over... Let me see. Hang on here. Uh, I say, okay. I, I guess we'll start with Lions, since that's what Steve started with. They actually started with a bunch of statistics, but, you know, we don't really care about those. Uh, it's like, okay, um... Yeah, you know, it's like, um... Let me see, what are we going to it, it, What do you think about the fact that they're going back to market share arguments? You know, they... they I mean, Apple always sells on statistics, but I, I find it interesting, given recent events, that they're, they actually made market share arguments this keynote. What market share arguments did they make? Uh, they, they give a very misleading statistic that says the PC market shrank and Apple's grew and, you know, se you know 73%... Oh, that, oh that, that wasn't market share. That was... Uh I mean, a lot of analysts have been saying that their that their uh, the entire PC sales output has was shrinking. But yeah, Apple's sales of Macs did go up, considering the entire market. But some of a couple of companies. I think uh, who was it that it stayed on par? I don't know if it was Dell or HP. I think it was HP on par. But uh, and I and I think IBM. Well, I mean, and the enterprise. But that's not physical market share. In other words, there's not 28 percent Apple market share. They're just saying that they grew. Wow. Well, yeah, the, don't, don't take don't trend. take this the wrong way. But when you're less than uh, when you're when you're of course yeah, yeah I we mean were about that last time. <laughs> it's like like I said, slightly mistaken. Um, well, uh, you, well, you, you what you you're saying is they're, they're making money. Uh, yeah, uh, no, and I don't disagree with that. You know, that, and that'll be what we'll round the show off. They definitely are making money given what they're proposing doing. Um, what do you think about? Uh, you were messing with the developer copy of OS X. Can yeah. you find all 250 of the new OS X features? Because yeah. they said there's 250 of them. <laughs> Apparently, some people are saying they're counting like several hundred um, HD wallpapers amongst that lot. Apparently. <laughs> wait, uh, wait, wait! They're counting each wallpaper as a feature. Yeah, apparently. It's, 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 uh, it's what some people are saying. From what I was told, yeah. I'm not going to say what's on there because there is NDA stuff involved. When you no, yeah, you're, and you're not allowed to talk. I, 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 I you, 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 we'll ask you again on this in a month when it's public, and then you're allowed to talk about it. But uh, uh, like, I'm just wondering, you know, like 250, okay, it's like 250 new wallpapers, okay. Um, I don't confirm or deny. He doesn't confirm or deny, but he will answer in a month or so. <laughs> like, he neither confirms or denies that there are 250 new wallpapers. It's like, uh, uh, there's lots of nice features. There are lots of nice features. Uh, okay. Uh, Stuff you can say is that there's full hard drive encryption. They've also done uh, address ram uh, address randomization. Finally, both for both 32 and 64 bit applications. So lots of good stuff. Remote wipe in total. So there's lots of good lots of good enterprise stuff. Automator's been uh, updated. Apple Script's been updated. It's good stuff. Okay. Uh, anyways, where the keynote started was everything is multi-touch. You know, everybody seems to be obsessed with gesture, multi-touch, and touch screens. Well, this I, you know, don't get me. Look, it, it might feel more natural. I'm a keyboard and sometimes mouse person, and nothing executes faster. I don't care. People can say yes. There's personal, per uh, there's personal preference. Okay, and it's like if you had autom automobiles. Okay, you, you, you have personal preference for which automobile you want, but the technicality of one engine is faster and will propel that vehicle faster than the other one. Now, speed is not the uh, res 
result that a user is looking for, then that won't be important to them. And the feelness of it would be. But I always thought computers were meant to make us more efficient and, and do our tasks faster. So that's why I look at speed. Well, no, it's like, and on that of the gestures, I mean, I guess the zoom can maybe be useful under some circumstances for productivity, but of all the ones they were pitching and selling and going, oh, this, oh, this, I'm with you. Keyboard and mouse, to me, would be more efficient, but there was, the, the, only, the, the only one I was really seeing that could maybe be, okay, I could see that being useful, especially if you have the touchpad and sign and everything else, was the one for the mission control access. I like, because that, that would be... Uh, for a key. It's a key shortcut. There. Done. Uh, I mean, for, for, for... Like, I have very close friends of mine that work, that work in Photoshop, and they do zooming and all this other stuff from the keyboard. I mean, they're firing away, bam, you know, and gets it... Uh, there's no way. As soon as you would go to the mouse and try to click that button and locate it, it's game over. You've already... Lost speed contest. Well, no, let's uh, see. The, 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 that's one of the reasons. Like, I, I, it sounds like you're, even though you're a Mac fan, you're the same school of thought on me on the whole Magic Mouse thing. It's like it's more an annoyance than a than yeah an augmentation. I'm totally, um, yeah, and like people moving your mouse to an icon on the dock to try to click it is even. I would give you another UI implementation. It's slower. Than just using spotlight and, and, and locate, you know, uh, open, whatever. I, I mean, th this uh, to me, it's just uh, on the desktop. Touch does not make sense to me, uh, uh, unless there is a, a specific like we need to draw on a pad. We need to do other maybe other things that involve perhaps more physical inputs uh, that a keyboard probably couldn't implement. Quickly, that's fine. Now, but if the argument is, Mr. Ben, I, I I can't memorize all these keyboard shortcuts, and I, I don't know. I would then counter argue and say, well, you're memorizing all of the gestures, and they're going to keep building a library of gestures. And the thing of it is, is for history, the, the fleets in the entire population of the world that was operating on computers did nothing but operate on keyboards and did work extremely efficiently. And um, well, and, and on these things, on the gestures, like uh, there were a couple people pointing out that there, these gestures were like in a beta before or something, and now the official gestures are slightly different than the other gestures. So if you learn the other gestures, now you're all screwed up or something. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, I'll say this: I think if someone likes gestures, then that's fine. I'm not. I'm just saying, don't come at me and say, "Oh, this is this is going to be you know more efficient uh, on a desktop." I mean, I, if you want to say it's more natural, I, I feel better doing it, that's fine. I think it's gimmicky on a desktop. It's, but it then it becomes necessary, and um, it becomes uh, the primary means of input on mobile devices, on, on, on uh, like notebooks, mobile phones, portables, because carrying a keyboard is... Um, yeah, it's the, 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 the cost of carrying is too high. When well, no, and see, that, that, that's the thing. Honestly, if there, uh, Phil, uh, Phil, I want to hear what you say on this in a second, but one of the things I'm a little concerned about with everybody going this route, I mean, this isn't just Apple, this is everybody going this route, yeah, is they're, 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 they're going to get rid of everything. I mean, basically, basically, we're going to have, we're going to need the hello computer. And we're going to need to be able to talk to it like they do in Star Trek. Now I know why they talk to the computer in Star Trek. Because if they couldn't, they'd all be bald like Picard. You know? Yeah. 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 I mean, really, I mean, I think what Bit said was right. I think that the thing is when you compare, like, obviously when you um, move a mouse around, you've got the whole of the desk to play with, but then when you're moving your finger, say, along a trackpad, as an example, you've only got a small amount of area to play with there, so that's probably where the, the, why it is less efficient. Like you say, I mean, whether, whether it, um, how do you say, it may feel better off doing things the other way around, but actually in terms of how efficient it is just now, 
when you compare those two things, it, you will get more things done in a shorter space of time using the old methods than you would the new ones. But I don't think a lot of people have really thought that through. Well, and it's one of those things, um, I, I think the people who have an appreciation for that are the power user keyboard warriors because they literally get like 50 things done by going like just every three seconds they're doing a new thing. Uh, and like, But it's the people who do that who understand that efficiency. Admittedly, yeah, that is, exactly. that admittedly, eight out of 10 of the end user never uses their computer at that level of efficiency, ever. <laughs> and that's kind but of... That's sad because yeah. the, what I'm arguing is that if the argument is, well, it's too hard to do. Well, generations before us, um, or I'm not that far back, but I mean, but my point is that people a little bit older than I, myself and my generation grew up doing nothing but living on the keyboard, and even when it went totally UI, went very fast. I mean, that that is the primary input still is king uh, execution for getting things done on, on the computer, on the desktop specifically. Mobile, I'm not even discussing or portable. And I think it's I think it's extraordinarily inefficient to make that a standard and then raise a generation on it because then you've dramatic. What are we going to have kids that look at a keyboard and go, "What is that?" I mean, and then, and then you've you've really essentially good drastically slowed down how we navigate applications, the computer itself, what we can put on there, and then. They're gonna, then we're going to be forced to have a simpler UI, which then totally eradicates the way you and I understand the desktop computing. Um, and maybe, okay, Mr. Bitt, it's post, post uh, desktop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. or as Jobs says, post PC, whatever. Yeah. But, okay, so it's yeah. post desktop. How, Bitt, how does it feel to be an old fogey? You know? <laughs> well, it's fine. You know, it's fine. But you know what? Then doing have fun doing a word document on your little iPhone and your in your iPhone. Well, no, but see, but that's what I'm saying. The only way I see, the, literally, you know? if you get, once you start making this transition, you need to get, unless you can get the computers to the point where you can talk to them. Like I can compose a letter by like I do with Dragon Speak. Unless every device is capable of that, then like you're saying, oh dear God. I mean, it's yeah, this thing about everything else that follows are consumer complaints and saying, well, make it do this. Which then you already have your foundation of saying, this is consumer expectation, and now all apps and everything else UI oriented is then founded on top of it. Which to me is just ludicrous on, on, the, des on the way we do desktop computing. Even if you're going to try to attempt to do word processing and, and programming on a mobile device, hello, people. Let's 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 step back a little bit. Let's let's come back from the the hype and the touchy feeliness of it and, and evaluate. Oh oh come on. Who who doesn't oh. love the magic? <laughs> and, and and on that note cuz this is actually key to the next point they did. Um, even though you hate I mean, the touch. I want to end this keyboard thing cuz now this whole thing how I have my video has started and it's going to spur a couple of videos on nothing but keyboards. So I'm going to get into PS2 versus USB. And I have no idea why the hell you have USB keyboards. It's, it's, the, it's the dumbest, most inefficient thing to do. You, key, you don't have end key rollover. I don't know if anybody knows what that is. I, 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 know, I, I know why they're doing the PS2 versus USB thing. Oh, yeah. I, I mean the USB I mean, versus PS2. The simple fact is because it makes the drivers easier and it lets them get rid of some ports on the system. I agree with you, it creates inefficiencies. But it, it, it lets them cut some the keyboard, corners. The keyboard, the frequency USB does, stupid. PS2 has full end key rollover. Also, it has a direct path interrupt to the CPU versus USB. No, no, bit, bit, uh, bit, I agree bit. with you, but it lets them cut corners that, unfortunately, only you and I care about. The average end user is oblivious and doesn't care. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna start getting into. I'm gonna get into all the key, the, the keys themselves, for for like, uh, you, you know, basically, uh, MX, you know, the cherry switches, you know, blue switches, red switches, brown and black switches. Then I'm going to get into scissor switches and the, and the cheap-ass uh, rubber mound switches that everybody thinks, you know, is... Uh, uh, you know, especially if it's that lovely organic rubber. Now, on to Safari. Let the lion hunt begin. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's something wrong with that. The browser is called Safari, and what do you hunt on Safaris? Why do you hunt lions? <laughs> that's, that's cute. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, I can see it being good. I, I, I need to see the Windows version of this next version of Safari. Because now that they've gotten rid of the scroll bar and a lot of the other stuff that gives you feedback on what's going on, I, I'm like, I, it, I can't decide if that's, oh dear God, a bad idea. Because the, the, I, I'm looking at this and I'm like, technically they're right. You don't need a scroll bar to let you know that you can scroll down. Unless you're on a website where it's not obvious that there's something to scroll down to. And I... I haven't used scroll bars in a long time either. I either do page down on my keyboard... No, or but you... But you mouse, I, have my, I have my scroll wheel. No, no, and I don't, I don't go click the bar. But the bar being there lets me know that there's something. Right on the document. Yeah, that there's more document down there because depending how the page is formatted, you don't always know that. That's true. And, and I'm thinking about okay, technically they're right. There's no reason for it to be there except to let me know that I should scroll my wheel down or you know use my thing. That's or what a very good point. You know what? I never thought about that. That's a damn good point. Yeah, I'm like because as far as I can tell, there's no icon on there anywhere to let you know. Oh, by the way, there's more stuff down there. Because something that's becoming real popular in web design, I've, I've done this for a number of clients lately, is floating menus, where the bottom menu is just fixed to the bottom of the screen as you float through stuff. Sure. And depending Absolutely. depending on the size of your screen and where, where things format, if that's in the spot right at the bottom of the paragraph, you don't necessarily know, oh, I should scroll down more without that scroll bar. You may lose whole sections of web pages now on Safari on a Mac. That's... Uh, I'm a little... I wonder if that was not thought of when they did this. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know. Like, they're going for all the gestures and the, you know, it looks like some, you know, so some of the stuff they were going for, you know, uh, looks like some of the stuff Windows showed up earlier this week, actually. People should get, you know, talking about keyboards, just use your page up and down for crying out loud. It's pretty, pretty damn quick. I, well, yeah, but how many people know they have a page up, page down button? I know, it's so uh, sad. Yeah. It's so sad. <laughs> what, what, what about your you? sadness. So <laughs> what, what about you, Phil? What do you think of the new um, Safari? The only thing I can think of is that they must be, um, I'm guessing that they reckon when people go to a page that they're going to, in the split second that they land on that page, that they're going to be able to catch a glimpse of, of that sidebar and be able to see how much room there is. I'm guessing that's, that's the only thing that they've thought of and why they've decided No, to there's that. no sidebar at all. So, what, so, it, so it doesn't even shut when you land on the page then? No, what they did was they went for this seamless experience. They got rid of the sidebar and some other icons on the top. Basically, it's, basically they're going for the minimalistic experience Chrome is going for plus that much more. Where basically right. it's a window around the thing you've loaded. That's it. Right, because I, cause I thought the way that it worked was that it, uh, when you move the mouse, the sidebar's there, but then when you sit still to read, the sidebar disappears. So maybe I got I must have mis misunderstood that then. Mm -mm, no, there's no sidebar, right. but you can do that gesture where you put your fingers down and just scroll up and down like you would on an iPhone. And the contents, if you have Safari selected, will scroll up and down if they're scrollable. Well, I mean, if that's the case, then there's no way of uh, seeing it at all. Then, then that is a problem for the simple fact, is, as you say, is that you what know, well, web pages technically? I mean, is there is, is there any real? Uh, I guess that the scroll bar is an overlay. Now. It's not. I, I like. I actually, what I saw them do, it, it is there. I think if you're close to it or something. Um, but I like its implementation. Talking about UI implementation in that, the scroll bar, we always had to consider how many pixels the scroll bar took. But today, the scroll bar overlays on the farthest right margin. Uh, in other words, mm -hmm. it, it's, not, uh, it's not pushing pixels. 
from the right to the left, it's overlaid. It, 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 especially it's like since most uh, web designers are sticking to the 930 or 960 margin, so it fits on a yeah. 1024 screen. So if you're on a higher resolution screen, you don't even care. You know, that's. Uh, it, it's I, you know it, I, it interesting idea, but we'll, we'll see what comes of the. Uh, you know, and it's one of those by virtue of it never having been done, it may have just been a minor oversight. Um, getting on to the feature. I think it's stupid. Bit loves. I don't know what your point of view on mission control is yet, Philip. What is your two cents on mission control? I mean, um, well, just obviously because the thing that people have likened it to similar is expose, and I mean, I have I haven't used expose that much, but when I have done, it has been useful. So I think that it, it you know, but it, it does serve a purpose. It's not something that you need for every single occurrence, but it does have its reason to be there. Well, I, 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 I don't think it's just, I mean, I think it's more than expose. It's just one of the multi-touch gestures they showed off was like you swipe up and you see all your running things. I'm like, wow, so you've put expose in mission control. Wow. <laughs> it's like that's hardly a new feature, you know. It's <gasps> yeah, well, I think I suppose the, the fact that uh, they, they, the way they've just liked it, I suppose the design it's is the totally way they've made it what they're mostly playing off of. Yeah, and I'm I'm not a fan of that whole screen experience everybody seems to be going for, but I'm sure it's what's going to take over. Uh, I, I I don't know. It's like uh, this was the interesting one. Uh, I, I want both of y'all's point of view on this. What do y'all think about the fact that you can only get your new OS from the App Store? What good one first? Can't stand that. Can't stand that. I'll say that right now. Can't stand that at all. Why can't you stand that? Do tell. For the simple, for, for the simple fact that, for, from my point of view, is that how on, uh, the first question I've come to mind is: Are we going to be able to clear out everything, like blank the drive, and reinstall it afresh? Because to me, it doesn't seem there's any way of doing that because they didn't say there was. Okay, that, well, I, I, my guess would be it can cache itself and do that, but I don't know that for a fact. Without violating your non-disclosure agreement, are you allowed to say if it can or cannot do that? There is a, there is a, a way for pro users, but the normal user is probably not going to go through the steps to do it. Okay, so there is there is there is a file. So, so there, there's a there's a way to do it, but odds are most won't be able to figure it out. Well, they, 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 I don't think that they could figure it out by reading the instructions. You know, uh, 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 okay, not to put too fine a point on it, but how many people, especially so Apple gonna, users, do you know that are TFM? You know, they're not going to do it. They're, not, they're just not. Uh, I have a, a whole chunk of my video dedicated to what the hell happened on this. <laughs> uh, so, basically, uh, I, tw I, I, I tweeted. Um, uh, or tweeted this. I posted on um, Twitter one of my uh, favorite. Let me, let me pull it up. I think this summarizes it. I was uh, I was being a smartass, and uh, basically it was. If you guys can, you know, basically in the keynote, you know, Phil Schumer should have gone this. They said Apple should have said no more installed DVD. DVDs because we are now post optical, and so OS 10 will now come on a flash drive, and everyone cheers and applauds. And I was just being a smartass with it, but <laughs> that's that's exactly I don't you know I don't know what they're doing. And if no, it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop piracy of OS 10 on non. I, I know, but I know that's why they did it. I know it has nothing to do with pushing the app store. The image is there to pull anyway. It's a, uh, no. they, the normal user doesn't hack a Mac. Pro users hack a Mac. So I can't see why they would... I don't see that as uh, any way of stopping piracy. Uh, okay, but do you disagree with my logic that that was probably the motivation behind it? Or? No, I, I think that... Uh, um, I think in part that... They're they're going to get. I, I read an article with them saying updates to OS 10 will, will, are likely in the future to be free, and that that 
they're probably gearing to be totally everything through the through their little app store, Delta updates, all of it, everything. And uh, I just think that's the mentality that they want to set. That's the yeah, it's like they basically they, they're like you must get it through the app store or it's not Mac yeah. or it's like, and that that's a good mentality from a business model. It so kind of sucks from another mentality. I mean, even Linux doesn't push repo only. You know, they they advise, but they don't. You know, they just say we can't support from outside the repo because we have no idea what the hell you're doing. <laughs> it's like, well, and of course, the good thing for from Apple's point of view is not only then. Are they preventing piracy, but also they're not having to resort to an activation key, so they can still claim that they're, you know, not using an activation key like Windows, even though they are using their own sort of system. Well, in line with Bit, I don't think this will stop one piece of piracy. No, that, that won't happen. No, the people who hack Macintosh and put it on other hardware know all of the ins and outs, how to full EFI <laughs> and OS X. No, that's that's a joke. To yeah. Uh, okay. What about this resume where you left off thing? Pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've I grown up. It, works. it definitely will work well in, in the long run. Just, I just hoping that it, that it works, obviously, because it's you know an unknown thing at the moment. Well, I, I, on the one hand, I'm glad they've added it because other things. But the way they, imp I mean, because you know, every if I if I just lose power right now. Um, ninety percent of the apps I have on here, you know, I relaunch them. All the files I have open are going to come back. You know, I launch Firefox. Every damn one of these tabs is coming back, and it's going to load them from the cache. Uh, if I launch um, LibreOffice back, every document I have open here, including the unsaved versions of them, are going to launch back. You know, it's just that for the most part, there's just this. It resumes. Um. They're on a system that does that. There are times when it's annoying. One of the things I wish was in the Apple version, I don't know if you can turn this on or not. This is on by default over here on the Linux side. I would like to see this on the OS X side, which is when you launch to resume, it can ask, Hi, do you want to resume or do you just want to start anew? Because there are going to be times you don't necessarily want yeah, to Yeah, I think there is an option to turn versioning off. There's got to be. I hope it's not all automatic. Yeah, because yeah, if it's on good. automatically, I'm going to think back to... The, there was a point, I think it was with Tiger or was the one before, where there was a form of auto-resuming and it could cause problems. Yeah, man, you don't... Oh, my gosh. We're going <laughs> to go through hard drive. I mean... Oh, this, this just... Uh, Okay. Uh, let's see. It's like there was resume. No, I, you you skipped the sandboxing. I, oh I no! Yes, I yes, Scott. No, yeah, you're yeah, right. I, for that. No, that, that, I, is, I, I I am glad, and I, I I I hate Apple, but I do have to give them credit for that uh, because that is a minimum necessary security feature. Wait a minute, though. It, yes, but they already do sandboxing within OS ten. But this thing, if if it goes out like on iOS five. Every time an application wants to go outside the sandbox, permission is going to be asked for the user. So this is what I posted on Twitter as well. FYI, on iOS 5, sandboxing with apps, if permission is prompted to the user every time, get ready for a bit of Vista-style UAC alerts. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Phone, wait, wait, wait a minute. They, they set it up like Vista where it's, do you want to allow the following thing to have permission? They didn't set it up where it just does a sandbox write read locally inside the sandbox? Well, the app inherently, but if they have to go in and out, which in iOS 5, some of the, some of the, like if there's app data that is not in the sandbox, to basically go, yes, it, it has to be a user prompted uh, oh no you know? no the, 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 that's a fail that was one of the things I loved about sandbox IE and Windows uh, uh, and sandbox well, there's all kinds of sandbox well, no 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 but no but but the, the, the way it worked like if it needed to go access something outside of the sandbox it would just yeah. pull it would just pull the thing it needed to access into the sandbox write a temporary version but let it write wait, wait, well that could then violate the actual no, 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 no. What, what it did was it basically create a self-contained sandbox within the sandbox that let it that let it do the things it needed to do without actually writing to the parent system. But every operating system, including Linux, has has your has your security sandbox and dependencies 
that are not going to be in the sandbox, but you, you do need to have services exterior to it on, on many cases. And in doing that, that's why we get props to say, okay, do, do, do we get permission to do this? What I'm saying that for is that Apple always bitched and made a commercial about being prompted for security reasons. And I'm trying to convey that, say, hey, <laughs> your security, get ready for your own I UAC. Oh, but but bet bet this won't be anything like this though, because it'll be a Mac. It'll go dunk instead of. Boom. <laughs> we can alert you that often, but I'm just saying, you know, when, when sandbox is always good. Every system's going to do that, but that's inherent to security. Look, there is nothing wrong with prompting the user to say, "Hey." Do you approve this? Do I get your permission? And with this and that. I'm just saying that users are now going to start getting alerts and saying, do I have your permission to do this? When that wasn't all happening before. And well, and, and, and if, if you, that's how they've set it up, hopefully there's a centralized place in there where you can just go through and go, yeah, always allow that, ask me on that, uh, always <laughs> deny that. and Yeah, you need, to, you need to go work for a Microsoft. That's what they used to do. <laughs> And Microsoft still does that, except it doesn't do not work right. <laughs> I sometimes get in a pissing match with those settings my, on a my, Microsoft my system. Parents, my, my parents coming up with Windows hated how installing of applications were prompting on OS X. I said, oh, sure, go back to your Windows world and let everything just flow. Yeah, no bother. Green light, everybody can go through the toll booth. No problem. <laughs> Anyways, what, what were you saying, Philippe? Um, I don't think that uh, there's, any, from my point of view, there, there wouldn't be anything wrong if that's if that is really what it will be like when it's when it does come into effect. As not the, the main problem I had um, and why I turned it off on Windows Seven uh, was because of the way that they used to dim the screen. I mean, yeah, put the warning up, but what on earth they were dimming the screen for? I don't know because that was just pointless and it was irritating. Oh, it was just to draw attention to the warning. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's the warning. You have to pay attention yeah, yeah, to it, the warning. Like, I just did that off. The fact that it went dim didn't bug me. The fact that it was either... Huh? Or... Huh? That bugged me. <laughs> like, uh, but, uh, I'm not saying it's wrong. What they're doing is wrong. No, no, I'm no, no. They used to make fun of people uh, for doing security. I, I, no, I, I laugh. I, no, I'm with you. I laugh at the number of things that Apple makes fun of that they ultimately wind up going. You know what? That's actually a good way to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it won't be as excessive as this. So all my point is, is that I guarantee you that user permission is going to be asked on iOS 5 and people that upgrade and they and they ask they, 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 that they want get sandboxed and then that prompt comes up that which it never did before it's going to be a new experience for them and they're going to go hey what's this about now I'm just, I'm just that's my point is all it's just a, a small point I know uh, moving on to the evil technology used for the good also known as airdrop P2P network technology. <laughs> well, it's, not, it's just Wi-Fi Direct with the, so, the, uh, uh, the software level access point. Yes, I know, but many people have already made fun of this because there's a number of ISPs that have been issuing routers that deliberately block this protocol from working at all and that's the Wi-Fi network for those homes and that's like Wi-Fi Direct is Wi-Fi Direct only needs a certification to run on it a, 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 if it needs to go to the internet use use the router it won't that's the point of it it doesn't need to communicate with anything of the Wi-Fi address or or any subnets gateways or anything it's only, it, it's self-discoverable, it's to this point, like, if I have a device here to that camera, if that's certified, it's going to, it's not even going to listen or talk to, to my routers, and it'll be able to simply just go, fine, you know, I just want to transfer this file here. It's like Bluetooth file beaming, you know, that it's completely... So it's basically a sub, autonomous. it's basically yeah. a sub Wi-Fi network, not, not, a, not over the actual TCP IP. It's totally, okay. it doesn't even work with the routers or anything it's that's why the discoverable it's the discoverable range of your wife your your wi-fi direct card can see maybe i don't know 30 50 feet whatever something like that oh so so 
Oh, okay, so th this is basically uh, an alternative Bluetooth technology. Yeah, okay. that's all. Okay. And I think it's powerful because think of the, implementa the implementations that I, I personally believe that HP is doing Wi-Fi Direct with the, the bumping of the phone to the... To the uh, oh, no, no. If, if that's what it is, I misunderstood what it is. If that's what it is, yes, there's a number of people doing that, and I'm actually a fan of that. Because it no 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 I I'm more a fan of that than Bluetooth because it's that is actually more securable than Bluetooth you know I realize technically Bluetooth only has like a thirty blah radius this is really small network but with the right equipment you know you you can access Bluetooth from yeah 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 yes. <laughs> damn far absolutely I agree with you um. It's, it, I'll tell you what, why don't you, I think this is important. I'm going to give you a link, and, I, and, and this was posted on my video, and I'd okay. like you to go ahead and show this. Um, cause yeah, a lot just of just, are just stick it clip. there under the air thing so I can stick it. Yeah, it's not, gonna, it's not my video, but it's the video that I linked to. And um, go ahead and show that in the show, because that's exactly what Wi-Fi Direct does. Okay. Now, the only question I would have that that video poses, and it is a good sign, is this an open standard, like anybody can use this Wi-Fi direct, because I, it, since it's di something different than I thought I haven't done my research on it yet, like, would this allow an Android phone to talk to an iPhone and, and vice versa? Is it, yeah, is it, so I'm just saying, the, 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 all it is is just it's a certification. Okay, so, so it's a standard everybody can come on and it can actually be platform Absolutely. agnostic like yeah. TCP, IP, and so forth. And, okay. No, because like one of the things I've been wanting to see for a while is like you're talking about the bump to thing. I, I don't understand any That's reason. Too. I just, no, no, I no, 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 I, I, I know, but it's like I, 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 what I want to see is a universal protocol like that where I can be on my Android device, you can be on your iPhone, and we just go. I realize you, you prefer well, WebOS, but, you, but you're actually, you're on WebOS, Philip's on his iPhone, I'm on my thing, and we're all just going beep, beep, beep together. <laughs> it's like, because there's no reason we shouldn't be able to. Yeah, I really hope that Apple does that, even, you know, with Android, and we can go, hey, ma'am, and, you know, here's the file, and you can even do cool gestures where touch would be cool, you know, I have a file and I flick it, you know. I, well, not, and the other thing is, if we're well, honest, more and more, actions. if we're well, honest, more and more, these dang things are becoming our wallets. So it's necessary as these things become our wallets for them to actually intercommunicate like that. You know, well, where, where we can just, I mean, that's just going to be part of day-to-day -day business. Yeah, then alone, right. you know, it's like, oh, do you need my business card? <laughs> like, and we don't need to clock existing like network. Uh, the sexual network in our exactly, game. which should be being used for what it's being used for, you know, not for handling transactions like that, <laughs> or transfers actually, but it, they'd be transactions too, but yeah. Okay, um, moving on to something y'all are a lot more qualified to comment on than me. Uh, Apple calls this a whole new version of me. Correct, i it huge. <laughs> I don't even use OS X now. I hated them. <laughs> I use Postbox too for, for my mail client on OS X. I, I can't, I couldn't stand OS X mail. It was it really, slow, it, buggy. It, it's that bad, huh? <laughs> it's like, 
Well, from what I've from what I've been reading on this, it looks like it's similar to the iOS they implemented uh, uh, a little a little ago, and that, so there's a, you know more uniformity there. Um, I would have to mess around with the smart search tokens. I've used those in the past. Depending how they're set up, I, I haven't used them on a Mac, but I've used them on other. Depending how they're set up, they're either your best friend or something you want to rip out of the system and throw against the wall. That's like, and only use would tell you which those are. Um, I, I, I find it interesting that this was a selling point. It's like, uh, the f- oh, oh, no, 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 not those. They, it, really, Conversations View is such a new and giant thing to the OS X mail that it's... I, I mean, everybody has a Conversations View. <laughs> it's like, they didn't have a Conversation View. No, I didn't like OS X mail at all. Uh, but, uh, Phil, Phil's a... You know, yeah, Phil. Speaker. I don't know what... Phil, did you, were you using OS X mail or were you using something yeah. else? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I have been. And as, as far as it goes now, I mean, for, for me anyway, I mean, what I use it for is, is, is simple enough. It, mostly for me, the reason why I used it is because it, it just irritated me that there was no way of getting stuff onto the computer so if I ever lost internet I couldn't read any stuff that had recently come through so but no I think I found the way that it is now for me at least alright and to be honest I think well I mean and I have I have been on um, Gmail on uh, on the internet as well and I've seen their conversations thing so I think that from my point of view I think that will be okay as well but oh, uh, and, and Thunderbird's been doing wait, that for wait, a long said time something. he said if your network is down you can't read your email do you not download locally to your client then because OS 10 um, mail at least could download from the yeah, server too. That's what I'm saying is that I um, have my mail client open all the time. So what I'm saying is if I lose, in, uh, well, that's why I like because a lot of people say that web mail is the way to go, and I don't believe that because from my point yeah, of view, it does go down. And hey, I can't hey, get hey, to hey, that. Okay, I have both pop mails and IMAPs. It honestly depends what I'm doing. Uh, I like IMAP and webmail because it's it's synced and it's it's independent of systems. But if you're gonna do that, you have got to back up once a week. I all my emails are copied locally, and there's a backup on the server and everything else. So it's it's not like well, it's yeah. like so. But it's like we had a discussion on another show. I yeah, I, I, I know. I, I, it's like, honestly, I never kill it from the server. At, until, at the end know, of I, the day, it depends on your workflow. In any given day, and in, in in any given week, I'm using upwards of ten different devices to access stuff. So locally stored is impractical for that workflow. It just isn't practical. It it needs to be a centralized sync place to hop around like I do. It just does. Uh, well, I, I, I do operate that way. It's just mine is viewed through a local client portal versus the web. The the messages all stay on the cloud, and they and they download a copy from the cloud to the device. But they but the and the copy remain the main mail remains on the server until I run my last client, which is usually happens uh, when I come home before I go to bed. I finally will read some of the messages I haven't read throughout the day and when I run that then all my devices have already really received it and the server gets cleared. Ah, uh, okay, so you're doing IMAP with copy. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I, I can see that being useful for your server. Okay, um, let me see, there's a whole new mail, it's like, oh, you know, they were kind of vague on this, maybe y'all understood this better than me. It, they, they got up there on stage and they said, when you upgrade, and you know, I was like, I'm like, upgrade, <laughs> you know, from Windows, Apple now helps you? I'm like, what the heck was that about, you know? When you, when you, when you, when you want to switch from Windows to um, Mac, they have, uh, I, I believe, and I haven't looked into it because that is a thing I'm not really interested in, but... I'm going to assume they've written tools that help you migrate your stuff from Windows to OS X. Oh, God, everybody does that now. Hi, we'll move all your documents and files and other shit. I'm like, eh. Yeah. Yeah, well, I really thought they had something like that the, um, built in there, I, I thought, as far as I knew. Something similar, anyway. Yeah. I don't know. I think it, I automated more stuff. Who knows? Okay. I haven't looked at it, 
I was like, we've already covered the lion available only. Uh, so it's like moving on to, I guess, part uh, two. Uh, do we want to pause for a second just to make sure and pick up with the... In sure. Yeah, let, let's do that. We're going to go ahead and pause and see y'all in the next part. Let me uh, go check.